This is a trip to the Imperial War Museum at Duxford and within a historical setting of war and conflict they study the topic of structures which brings together science, technology, mathematics, critical and analytical thinking skills. I was particularly interested in Duxford because they cover an area of the curriculum which is not usually done by external visits. I've never taught structures before. So, has anybody got any idea what a structure might be? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at, yes. Is it something that's been built? Everything around us is a structure. Everything, including all of you standing here, you're all structures. All the buildings that we are in or around are structures. All the aeroplanes and other aircraft that we'll see, they're all structures. Because a structure is just something bigger that's made out of small pieces joined together. One of the things we're so trying to I do with something like the structures activity is to open up the fact that, yes, this is a museum and it's a museum about, to a great extent, about conflict. But that's not all you can learn about here. There's an enormous amount of science and technology you can do. The reason that Duxford is such a good place to do this is that we have a wide variety of uh, building structures and also the aircraft, the aeroplanes and all the airframes and so on uh, that we can compare and contrast. If you look up at the building first, what shapes can you see lots of? Triangles, yes. Hundreds and hundreds of triangle shapes. All across there, across there, even down the walls, look. Duxford is a superb place to go because the people running the educational centre there have very, very clear educational ideas based on recent and up-to-date educational philosophy and thinking. So we've now seen frames made of triangles. We've seen what I would call mass structures. That's a mass of things all piled on top of each other, the bricks. And here we've got a shell. The aircraft are housed in a Norman Foster designed hangar, but inevitably it's the aircraft that proved to be the biggest draw for the children. We have um, a boy in our class who is not a high attainer. He's quite quiet in class, he doesn't put forward his own views. Duxford yesterday was just a revelation, both for him and it was good for us to see him in action because we know that he spends an awful lot of his time at home building these enormous Lego Star Wars models. Well, to go to a place where there's aeroplanes for a start, certainly the likes of the Blackbird, was just awe-inspiring for him. He had the most wonderful morning. He soaked everything up. And then in the afternoon, he got the best thing, an hour to play with connects and build things. When the lecturing is over, the practical task set for the afternoon is to design a hangar big enough to house a Vulcan bomber, or at least a 50th scale model. He'll be so proud of us when they try and cross. So it's beginning to be quite good, but it's still very, very flexible, yes. I think the wonderful thing is that the children who normally shine at all these things so marvellously in school were not the ones who shone necessarily yesterday and there was a, a real sense of achievement for the children who perhaps don't normally stand out as being terrifically successful. Right, excellent. This is two teams working together to build one finished hangar. So who's got the aeroplane? Yes, it will. That's good. My own knowledge and understanding of structures has now grown incredibly. I learned a tremendous amount. I learned what the basic structures are. Um, I learned some of the names that I wasn't aware of. And I think that's, that's one of the real benefits of going to places like Duxford that have a very good and clear educational provision in that it's as good for the teachers as it is for the, for the pupils. This is a really good trip to the National Archives at Kew where the children are very, very privileged in seeing some of the oldest historical documents that have shaped this country. It's just such a fantastic trip. It's not often that you can get to see genuine 
documents, 500 years old, and it really inspires the children. Now I want you to look very carefully at this Tudor King, and I want you to tell me which Tudor King you think it is. What do you think, boys? What do you think? Is it the young Henry VIII? This was painted when he first came to the throne. He was a very young king at that time. We're offering pupils the opportunity to see documents that were created at the time of some of the most important events in history. So they're not taking on trust, as it were, the words of historians written in history books, but they can actually return to the original evidence, the source material themselves. What I've got here, it's actually kept under lock and key normally. So you're so lucky to see it. This is pure gold. <gasps> Look at that. This is the gold seal. Not of Henry, but it's actually the gold seal of the French king. Some of the reactions of the children were fantastic when they brought the gold seal out that Henry had used at the Field of the Cloth of Gold with the King of France. Just to see that solid gold was magnificent. You know, the children just were overwhelmed by it. So you can now go home today and say that you have seen the King of France, King Francis I, gold seal all the way from 1527. But I've got some other documents to show you. This document here is a letter from one of King Henry VIII's wives. It's the second wife that lost her head. Can anyone remember who that was? Catherine Howard. Well done, Catherine Howard. So she lost her head. Do you know why she lost her head? Why she was executed? Yes. Because Henry thought that she, um, she, she was cheating. He did. He thought that she had other boyfriends apart from him, the king. Now, this is evidence that she did indeed have another boyfriend. He was a man called Thomas Culpepper. And this is one of the love letters that she wrote to him. And in fact, it's the only evidence that survives, that's left in the whole world to prove that she had another lover apart from the king. It's really important that the pupils can feel the history. These documents were real. They were written by the people hundreds of years ago and they can actually see that and they learn to gather evidence to back up some of the theories of why certain events took place. The group end the day by having a performance in the Great Hall at Hampton Court. We arrived at the Great Hall, which great is really what it is. It is so fantastic. The um, children were overawed. They were inspired by the ceiling. The tapestries on the wall were incredible. It's so impressive just by the sheer scale of it. This room is my bedroom. It is mine and 599 others. The Great Hall at Hampton Court was also used for special occasions and today's special occasion is the performance of Stanley Jr's Mask. The dramatic setting helps them to get deep into historical events. Let the joust begin. We've had a number of children who say, oh, I didn't realise history could be this fun, but it, it's, it's been really exciting. I've had a really enjoyable morning. But they can't believe that they've actually seen the original documents. They've been allowed to look at them very closely and to use them in the workshop. So that, again, is really special for us as, as education officers and for teachers as well, because it is bringing the subject to life. It's adding a new, a new element, a new dimension to the subject. God save him in his right. Amen. Amen. This is a fantastic trip to Blist's Hill, Victorian town at Ironbridge Gorge Museum. And it's a recreation of a Victorian town where the children, from the minute they arrive, are totally immersed in Victorian life and times. What we've done is created a small industrial uh, village, small town, um, aimed at about the end of the uh, 19th century. And it's got all those things you'd expect from a, a small town, a foundry as we've got here, and uh, a bank, and uh, we've got a pub of course that you'd need. Further down the road we have a candle factory. Candle's very important of course in the mining industry. All the sorts of um, services you expect to keep a um, small economy busy. Yeah. So I didn't have much mass-produced machines. Come have a look over here, guys. It was just a really good chance for them to practically see what life would have been like and to talk about and compare it to what life for them is like now and how things are completely different. Um, and they came out with lots of comments, really, about how, wow, I can't believe they had that and I can't believe it was like that. 
Well, this is Lloyds Bank. Now, if you want to spend our token money in our Victorian town, we need an exchange rate to take you back 105 years. So for every one pound, 100 pennies you give me, I'm going to give you two and a half Victorian pennies. Tap and take me. That's a good deal, isn't it? Printing was actually one of the really, really good examples of where the children sort of went, wow, how that compares to today. Ugh. There you go, Tansy. It is an immersive experience. We have demonstrators in costume who will talk to small groups and explain what they're doing and interpret what's going on in that particular exhibit, for example, the candle factory, or you'll see pills being made in the chemist shop. But we can also add value as well. So, for example, we have a Victorian school where a group dresses up as Victorian uh, children. Within a real evocative setting that is steeped in history, the children can participate much more fully. They really start to feel the emotions of the times and act out the actual historical events. Stand still, back straight. Our hymn today is All Things Bright and Beautiful. All things bright and beautiful. In the Victorian school, children who were absent would be noted and any children who came late would, would be in very serious trouble and would probably be caned. Remember children, cleanliness is next to godliness. Five pennies add nine pennies. How many does that come to? Yes, stand up please. 14. 14 pennies, well done. I think it was incredibly real for them and they sort of found it a little bit uncomfortable to start. But what was really nice was where I was sitting in the schoolroom and watching them, was that you could see them really taking on that role. What you learn here applies to your working life. Remember that you are born working class and you should not aspire to be anything else. If we went back to Ironbridge, the one thing that we'd definitely do is just ensure we had more time there so that we could really experience everything to its fullest. Then being able to go and do means much more to them than being told or, you know, than them reading about it. Off you go. For my learning as well, it was really, really good. And it was really good to talk to such knowledgeable people about it. I think that's always really handy when you're doing a topic, to have people who are so knowledgeable about it to explain things as well. The fact that we were all involved in it together was, was really good. Each one of these visits and trips out is really, really worthwhile. The children have fun, the staff have fun, you're in a totally different environment and you can really let go and immerse yourself and the students in historical events.